Got thrips? Better get aphids. Think I'm crazy? I'm not, and you're about to find out why. Have you ever released ladybugs into your garden only to find 24 hours later they're gone? Well, that's because you didn't build a host environment for the adults. You see, it's not the adult insects that usually eats the pests you don't want, like aphids or like thrips. It's their baby, the larva. So you've got to convince the adults to stay around and lay their eggs. And you do that by creating what's called a host environment, and that involves three things. Food, water, shelter. Let's start with water. Water for beneficial insects is really simple. Any source of clean water with no chemicals. Could be something like this bird bath. I've got various other little stands around that collect water. I can add water in from a watering bucket. I live on a farm. We have horses. We have water troughs. So all different kinds of sources of water, but make sure it's clean and it has no chemicals. That's the number one thing you need is water. And the next one is going to be food, and that's what we're going to talk about next. Food is basically perennials with good nectar. You want an assortment that blooms from spring all the way into fall. Now, rather than recommend specific ones, what I want you to do is to find ones that are localized for your area. So what you want to do is find out, first of all, what are your common pests? Thrips and aphids for roses are the most common ones. Then find out what are their predators in your area. What do those predators want to eat? What kind of flowers do they like? So go to jacksonperkins.com. Look at their perennials. They've got ones that bloom in spring, ones that bloom in summer, ones that bloom in fall. Bring in an assortment of ones that you like and you know are going to help you. And at that point, plant them amongst your roses like I've done here. Not separately, you want to put them in the garden with your roses because that food source is what's gonna keep the adult beneficial insects around so they can lay their babies, which are the ones that are gonna eat the insects you no longer want. So, we've got water, we got food, and now, gimme shelter. Shelter for beneficial insects comes in many forms. The most common one is gonna be the rough foliage from perennials and shrubs like this butterfly bush left over the winter. That's why I don't want you to cut them back in fall. Just leave them till spring, because this is gonna home a lot of beneficial insects we will lay here for dormancy during winter, and then come spring, they're ready to hop into action to help you with your garden. Other forms can be things like ornamental grasses. Those are fabulous for that kind of thing, for shelter. The other thing you might want to think about are piles of old wood. Just take a bunch of sticks somewhere and just pile them up. That's a really good way to go. So the main thing to think about is just use all different kinds of shelter. Rough foliage, ornamental grasses, piles of wood, shrubs like holly, evergreen, juniper, all of those different things, lots of combinations in your garden, and that's going to give you shelter for your beneficial insects. We've been talking about beneficial insects, but I want to pause for a moment to talk about another great predator that's going to help in your garden, birds. Birds eat all kinds of insects. Find out what kind of birds in your area eat the insects you don't want. Hang bird feeders, bird houses, bird baths. Attract and keep those birds in your garden. So now that we've covered birds, we've covered food, we've covered water, we've covered shelter, you may remember at the beginning I talked about if you have thrips, you got to get aphids. Now we're going to find out why, and for that, we're going to talk about Mama Hoverfly's story. Here's Mama Hoverfly's story. It's early spring. She emerges from dormancy. She looks around at all the perennials and all the plants that are in there for good nectar. There's a food source we provided water for. She's thinking, boy, I like it here. This is a great place to raise a family. So you know what? I'm going to lay some eggs, but I know my eggs, my babies, aren't going to be able to eat the nectar. They need insects that they can feed on. You know what? They love aphids. It's spring. Maybe I'll get lucky. Siri, when do the aphids appear? Hmm, let me think. Okay, I found this on the web for when do aphids appear. Great, it's now. I'm going to go ahead and lay some eggs and raise a family here in this garden that's provided me with food, water, and shelter. Now, I know aphids love roses. I got a rose right here. So I'm going to go ahead and lay my eggs into these roses. I'm sorry, can a girl get a little privacy for just a second here? This is great. I've laid my eggs. I know my babies are going to be okay. They're going to have aphids to feed on because they're not using insecticides in this garden. They provided a host environment. I've got my food. I've got my water. I've got my shelter. But meantime, back at the rose. Back at the rose, Mama Hoverfly has laid her eggs. They emerge. Those larvae emerge when the aphids show up. That's what they eat. They eat the aphids. And they become adults. They then start to fly around the garden. But you know what? They hang out because we provided them food, water, and shelter in our host environment. Now, let's fast forward a couple of months. They decide it's time to start a family, but the aphids are gone. However, it's thrip season. The larvae love thrips. They time it, go back to the roses, they lay their eggs, the thrips appear, then those larvae eat the thrips, and it keeps going all season long. And this is why it all ties in and why it's so important. 
because if I had gotten rid of my aphids early in the season, I wouldn't have had the first generation of mama hoverflies kids who would then lay eggs to deal with my thrips in the summer. That's why if you want to get rid of thrips, you got to get aphids. Now, the other important thing to remember about this is it's okay to have a little insect damage in your garden. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nature isn't perfect. In fact, I think a little insect damage in your garden is actually a sign you've got a healthy host environment. For Jackson and Perkins, this is Paul Zimmerman, and thanks for spending time in the garden with us. Mm -hmm.